And how do you how do you prove this? So it is in this proof that I need this hyperbolic geometry ok. So what you do is you know you first so here is you choose a point uh, you choose a point uh, 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 mm, ok let me use B you choose so I will tell you what we are going to do it is very very simple choose B in delta minus d naught ok choose a point b which is outside, outside d naught but inside delta and this is possible because d naught is not the whole unit disc ok and what you do is you take a Mobius transformation that will map which is an automorphism unit disc and that will map the point b to the origin ok. So what you do is so you know I am going to take a map like this so I am going to take a h a small h so let h of zeta p zeta minus b by 1 minus b bar zeta ok. You know that this is an automorphism of the unit disc that will map uh, b to 0 ok and it is a it is an automorphism. So what this will tell you it will tell you that you know h of b is 0 ok h of b is 0 and that will imply that h of uh, d naught will not contain 0 because b is not in d naught h of b will not be in h of d naught because h is a mind you it is a bijective map ok. Since b goes to 0 and b is not in d naught ok h of b will not be in h of d naught that means 0 will not be in h of d naught. So you know the effect of h on this thing will be something like this. Now you can think of uh, I am just drawing something figuratively you know this h will map uh, d naught into something this is h of d naught it will it will push b to 0 and you know it will map h of d naught uh, d naught on to h of d naught and this h of d naught will not be uh, it will not contain 0 alright and since h of d naught does not contain 0 I can find uh, see whenever a domain a simply connected domain does not contain the 0 I can always find an analytic branch of the square root ok. This you can the problem with finding uh, branch of the square root is that uh, the square root of the function you are trying to find that should not vanish and uh, the domain where you are trying to define the square root it should be simply connected ok only then you will get a square root. So, uh, h of d naught is a simply connected domain because it is the image under h of this simply connected domain d naught and h is an automorphism h is a holomorphic automorphism so it is a homeomorphism ok. So, h is an isomorphism topological isomorphism also from d naught to h of d naught and since d naught is simply connected h of d naught is also simply connected and h of d naught does not contain the origin. So, there is a branch of the uh, 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 I mean there is a branch of the logarithm and you can use that uh, you can find a branch of the uh, branch of log neta and you can therefore find a br analytic branch of root neta where you know if you if you want to call, call neta as the variable here neta is h of zeta ok uh, uh, there exists uh, analytic branch. of log neta on uh, h of d naught why because h of d naught does not contain 0 and it is simply connected ok. So, there is an analytic branch of log log of neta ok and and so and hence an, an analytic branch of the square root of zeta uh, so let me use capital G g neta of root neta 
and you know root neta is e to the half log neta I mean the moment you get an analytic branch of log e to the half log will give you a square root right and and then so you know now you know therefore I have this g this g is a, a g is defined on this and g is a branch of the uh, square root okay and if I take its image of course this does not contain 0 so if I take its image uh, under g I will again get something that is not 0 so you know if I apply g I will probably get you know uh, 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 so I do not have enough space to draw this but anyway I will draw it so this is what will happen if I apply g I mean my, my diagrams are not accurate but they just they will just help you to visualize what is going on. So this is what happens if I apply g okay. So g will move this h d naught into g h d naught and that will be a uh, 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 of course the image of uh, the image under g of hd naught will be again an open set because again open mapping theorem will always tell you the image of a non constant uh, analytic uh, map will always be open so you know h so what i'll get is i'll get this domain which is uh, g of hd naught h of d naught i'll get this domain right i'll get this domain and uh, uh, well all I can say about it is uh, 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 but there is even more see the fact is see the square root uh, the if you take the square root function okay the square root function is injective okay the square root function is injective because you have chosen an analytic branch choosing an analytic branch means you are choosing a continuous branch that means you are choosing one square root only one of the square roots and that too you are choosing them choosing it in an analytic way so the square root is always injective the square root function when you take the analytic branch of the square root that will always be injective okay therefore the moral of the story is g is in fact a holomorphic isomorphism because it's an injective analytic map okay so g you see g g from uh, h of d naught uh, to d naught to g of h of d naught is a holomorphic isomorphism holomorphic or analytic isomorphism because you know it is one to one it is injective analytic it is an injective analytic function and inverse function theorem will tell you an injective analytic function is a holomorphic isomorphism image will be open because of the open mapping theorem because it is a non constant function in fact it will be isomorphic to the image so g is a holomorphic isomorphism all right okay g is a holomorphic isomorphism now you see so you know uh, so you know you have this h that moves this to this so you know that 0 is was in d naught okay 0 was in d naught therefore you know I will get the image of 0 under h it will be h of 0 that will be a point in h of d naught okay and then I will get its further image under g I will get a point here and this point will be h of g uh, what was it I use capital G capital G of h of 0 okay so this is what I am getting so let me get rid of this this arrow is confusing so let me remove it okay so I have this d naught which is moved by small h onto h of d naught which is uh, and that is an isomorphism because small h is an automorphism of unit disc then from h of d naught to g of h of d naught is also an isomorphism because g is an 
isomorphism on H of D naught. Okay, but there is something funny about G. See, this G is not defined on the whole unit disc. This G is not defined on the whole un whole unit disc. It's only defined on this simply connected domain. Okay, and therefore you know what this G, as far as the it is, uh, see the Pick's lemma and hyperbolic geometry only tell you that if you have an automorphism of the unit disc, then it will be an isometry for the hyperbolic metric. But G is of course an auto G is of course an isomorphism from H D naught to G H D naught, but G will not be an isometry with respect to the hyperbolic. In fact, G will be an expansion. G will become a strict expansion. Why? Because you see, we have already seen that G is the inverse of uh, this function, the squaring function, which is a strict contraction. Therefore, G will be a strict expansion. Okay. All right. So, the fact that the squaring, the square function, is a is a strict contraction, will tell you that its inverse, which will be a branch of the square root, that will be a strict expansion. Okay. So, uh, uh, so you know, neta going to neta squared is a strict contraction. Implies that G is a strict expansion. So, so what does so what does this mean? This means that is, you see, uh, uh, G of neta. So you know, strict expansion with respect to what? Of course, strict contractions, strict expansion, etc. Are with respect to the hyperbolic metric. So you know, if you take the image. Uh, under G of two points, neta uh, uh, zero, neta one, and take the uh, you take two points neta zero and neta one in the uh, in H D naught. Okay, and you take their images under G. They will be two points in G of H of D naught, and you take the hyperbolic uh, distance that will be you know that will be greater than or equal to c times a constant times uh, uh, the hyperbolic distance between the two original points for for suitable c greater than 1 this will happen see this is expansion see expansion means this expansion means that the, the distance between the image points hyperbolic dis, distance between the image points is greater than the hyperbolic distance between the source points and there is a constant which will appear and the constant will be greater than 1 you know what is that constant that constant is actually the reciprocal of this constant with r replaced by root r where uh, uh, root r is a uh, root r is such that mod neta less than or equal to root r uh, contains h of d naught okay so in fact in fact c is equal to uh, 1 plus r by 2 root r where uh, mod neta less than or equal to r uh, mod neta less than or equal to root r uh, contains h of t naught that is in fact that that will come from here okay that will come from here note that after all small g uh, capital G is an inverse for small g small g is a square function all right capital g is a square root capital g is an inverse for small g okay so you know if you in this in this expression uh, you call this as neta naught call this as neta 1 okay then this will be g neta g neta naught and this will be g neta 1 okay and you will get this expression where you will have to put g neta uh, uh, to be inside this okay and if you want 
the image under G to be in the disc bounded by R then the source disc should be bounded by root R okay. So from this you ought you will automatically get this okay. So, so the moral of the story is that you know we, we need to use this now so alright so now uh, so we have that G is a strict expansion alright and then what you do is see now I still uh, you know my originally 0 was there in my D0 okay and then I translated I mean I used I mapped this small b to 0 therefore when I took h of D0 0 was not there okay and then I am using the square root function so 0 will not continue to be there alright but then I, I, I would still go I like to go back to the origin. So what I will do is I will apply another uh, Mobius transformation that will map g h 0 to the origin okay. So I will bring this I will bring this fellow back to this to the origin okay by applying a suitable uh, uh, map and let me call that map as uh, uh, I have too many arrows here. So you know I have uh, so I will I will apply a map like this so consider so put uh, so I have used uh, small h uh, let me use h1 so h1 of uh, 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 omega to be you know I will put omega minus uh, g h 0 by 1 minus g h 0 bar omega I will do this okay what this will do is that it is an automorphism of unit disc that will map g h g of h of 0 capital g of small h of 0 to the origin okay. So now and what I will do is now I will consider this composite from the uh, uh, so I, I have d naught I first apply h okay and I land inside hd naught that is an isomorphism then from hd naught I apply g and I land in g hd naught this is also mind you an automorphism I mean this is also an isomorphism because g is a, a bran analytic branch of the square root which is injective and an injective holomorphic map is an isomorphism onto its image okay and then now and then I have applied uh, this h1 that goes to uh, h1 of g of h of d0 and mind you h1 is also an isomorphism because h1 is a automorphism of the unit disc it is also injective so it gives an isomorphism from this to this okay. Now what you do and, and notice that 0 goes back to 0 so you know 0 goes to uh, h0 which goes to g of h of 0 and that goes back to 0 so 0 goes to 0 right and now uh, the big deal is that uh, you look at the derivative of this function um, so you know uh, so let me continue uh, from let me continue from here so now look at put put psi to be this composition that is first apply small h then apply g then capital G and then apply h1 put psi1 to be this okay then uh, psi then psi, uh, psi of 0 put psi to be equal to this then psi of 0 equal to 0 alright of course and now calculate calculate the derivative psi dash of 0 okay. You know I am trying to look at I am the lemma says that if you have smaller simply connected subdomain than the unit disc then, can, then I can find an analytic map which maps it uh, 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 isomorphically uh, onto a subdomain of the unit disc which uh, which takes 0 to 0 
and whose derivative the origin is greater than 1 ok that is the lemma right and I am trying to prove that lemma I claim that this psi is the psi that I need. So, it is certainly a map it is so it is of course psi is of course an isomorphism because it is a it is injective it is a composition of 3 injective maps. So, it is an injective map so it is an isomorphism it takes 0 to 0 ok calculate the derivative of psi at the origin let me use the correct uh, variables my d naught what was my variable on d naught on d naught it was zeta and h of zeta I call it as neta and neta goes to g neta which I have called as uh, g neta is called as w and then I have h 1 of w which I will have to give another uh, uh, name. So, uh, I am short of uh, so let me use gamma ok normally gamma uh, is used to denote a path ok but I am short of symbols so let me use gamma. So, you know the variables on d naught it is zeta on h d naught it is h zeta which is neta ok on g h d naught it is g neta which is w and again on h of g of h 1 of g of h of d naught it is the target variable is gamma which is uh, h 1 of w ok. So, let me write one more step the way I have written it psi is a function of the starting variable which is zeta and the ending variable is gamma ok is how it is right and uh, what is what is psi dash what is modulus of psi dash of uh, at the origin this is limit zeta tends to 0 uh, psi zeta by zeta it is psi zeta minus psi 0 by zeta minus 0 right and but psi of 0 is 0 and so I will get limit zeta tends to 0 psi zeta by zeta ok I will get this ok certainly I, I can write this as limit zeta tends to 0 mod uh, psi zeta by zeta I can write this because after all uh, the map psi at the origin is analytic. So, the derivative exists so this limit does exist and if the limit exists I can take this uh, the modulus is a continuous function so I can write this, but my aim is I want to show that this is greater than 1 because that is the purpose of the lemma the lemma purpose of the lemma is to show that I can map a smaller uh, simply connected subdomain of the unit disc I can I can map that isomorphically onto another similar uh, smaller simply connected subdomain of the unit disc which contains the origin, but with the extra condition that the derivative of the origin can exceed 1 the fact that I can the fact that I can make the derivative at the origin in modulus exceed 1 is exactly the due to the fact that I am working on a strictly smaller domain than the unit disc because if had it been the unit disc Schwartz lemma will tell you that the, the differential version of Schwartz lemma will prohibit this from happening it will make the derivative at the origin to be less than or equal to 1. But the fact is because I am mapping my, my domain is not the whole unit disc but a smaller simply connected domain smaller than the unit disc I can make the derivative at the origin greater than 1 I can I can exceed the do bound of the short lemma that is the whole point. So, somehow I have to make this greater than 1 ok. Now, the fact is you know I have to somehow use this estimate ok this estimate this estimate is connected with the mapping in between which is capital G ok the mapping in between which is capital G which is the uh, square root function it is an analytic branch of the square root is expanding ok and I have to use that estimate ok to show that you know uh, this happens all right. So, you know let me do something let let us keep this as it is and let us try to apply that uh, let me try to apply this. So, you know let us calculate uh, rho h of psi of uh, uh, zeta comma psi of 0 by rho h of zeta comma 0 
let us calculate this okay let us calculate this. Well you see uh, this is the same as rho h of psi of theta comma psi of 0 is just 0 divided by rho h of theta comma 0 okay. But you see uh, now but what is psi of zeta psi of zeta is h1 of g of h of zeta so this is rho h of h1 of g of h of uh, zeta uh, comma uh, let me keep okay, let me write this here h1 of g of h of 0. I rho h of zeta comma 0 okay so I get this all right and now see I can knock off the h1 because h1 is an automorphism of the unit disc okay and therefore it is an isometry with respect to the hyperbolic metric. So you know I can throw out that h1 so you know that will that will be equal to rho h of of course you know please do not confuse this subscript h with the h with this h because this h uh, subscript of rho is supposed to uh, signify that I am taking hyperbolic distance okay. So do not confuse the subscript h of rho with the map h okay. So I can knock this h1 out because h1 is an automorphism of the unit disc and it is an isometry with respect to the hyperbolic metric that is part of uh, Pick's lemma all right or Schwartz lemma. So, uh, so the I can simply write it as rho h of g of h of theta comma g of h of 0 uh, divided by rho h of zeta comma 0 okay I can I can write this since h1 is an is since h1 is an isometry. of delta with respect to the hyperbolic metric rho h okay. So I can do this and then you know but g is uh, I already have an expression for uh, rho h of g of something divided by rho of that thing alright. So you know in this uh, in this expression what you do is you put neta naught is equal to small h of zeta and you put neta 1 is equal to small h of 0 okay. So I will end up with uh, 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 so you see this will be greater than or equal to c times uh, by using this estimate I will get c times rho h of uh, uh, what should I put instead of neta naught it is h zeta uh, and instead of neta 1 I have to put h 0 okay. So here is where I am using this estimate where c is greater than 1 alright. I have used so this is very important I have to use this estimate which is reflection of the fact that the square root function is expanding and that is because its inverse function which is the square function is contracting and why it is contracting is because it is defined on the whole unit disc and uh, it is not an isomorphism and any analytic function on the whole unit disc taking values in the unit disc which is analytic and which is not an isomorphism is necessarily strictly contracting okay. That is where see here, here is where I am using hyperbolic geometry throughout the proof okay. So I will get this but you know if you look at small h small h is also an automorphism of the unit disc. So small h is also an isometry with respect to the hyperbolic metric. So in the numerator I can knock off that h. So uh, so, so finally this see this ratio turns out to be uh, this ratio turns out to be greater than uh, I mean it is it is greater than or equal to c which is greater than 1 okay. So now you know 
uh, then I will have to compare this you know so you know as uh, as zeta tends to 0 okay uh, what will happen is this ratio rho h of psi zeta uh, psi of 0 by rho h of uh, zeta 0 uh, this is equal this is greater than or equal to c which is greater than 1 okay you have this okay if you combine all this together this works uh, if you let zeta tend to 0 all right on the other hand my claim is as zeta tends to 0 this is exactly psi zeta by zeta this is uh, this behaves like psi zeta by zeta therefore in other words as zeta tends to 0 uh, if you take mod psi zeta by zeta it is a quantity which is greater than 1 and therefore the derivative at 0 is greater than 1 that is the claim. So what I what we need to understand is that this uh, as zeta tends to 0 behaves like psi zeta by zeta okay and uh, I think that 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 is that that should be alright because you see uh, rho if, if you if you calculate rho h of uh, uh, psi zeta comma psi 0 is rho h of psi zeta comma 0 okay and we know what this is this is half we have a we have seen a formula for this, this is half ln uh, uh, one plus mod psi zeta by one minus mod psi zeta this is what rho h is okay right and rho h of rho h of uh, uh, zeta comma 0 will similarly be half ln uh, 1 plus mod zeta by 1 minus mod zeta okay we know these formula okay and now again you know if you uh, if you actually divide and uh, let zeta go close to uh, 0 then the ratio will be psi zeta by zeta uh, will behave like psi zeta by zeta just because of uh, again because of uh, uh, if you want uh, the L'Hopital's rule okay. So you know uh, you know if you calculate half ln of 1 plus mod psi zeta uh, by 1 minus mod psi zeta divided by half ln uh, 1 plus mod zeta by 1 minus mod zeta if we calculate this see what I want you to understand is half ln 1 plus x by 1 minus x is approximated by uh, 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 x for x sufficiently small see see if I, if I expand half ln 1 plus x by 1 minus x where x is a small quantity okay then you know uh, what I am going to get is I am going to get half into ln of 1 plus x minus ln of 1 minus x okay and uh, this will uh, see this will be x plus uh, uh, terms involving x squared and so on because ln 1 plus x is x minus uh, you know x squared by 2 plus x cube by 3 and so on right. So you know if I if I expand both in power series for x sufficiently small all right if i expand and subtract what i'll get is i'll get uh, i'll get uh, x plus something and then i here i'll get minus of minus x and so on so i'll get 2x and then there is a half outside so i'll get x plus terms involving x squared and higher powers okay so as x becomes small this quantity is uh, uh, so so as x tends to 0 uh, half ln 1 plus x by 1 minus x uh, is 
behaves like x ok I need this fact. So, as x becomes very small ok half ln 1 plus x by 1 minus x can be approximated to x. So, this can be approximated to the numerator it will be mod zeta psi of zeta by mod zeta as uh, zeta mod zeta tends to 0 ok this is an approximation this comes very close to the behavior of this all right and therefore the moral of the story is that if i now calculate if i like take the limit as zeta tends to 0 of mod psi zeta by zeta the behavior is like taking uh, the uh, limit as zeta tends to 0 of this mod of this quantity and that is always greater than 1 so you know therefore <laughs> what you will get is mod uh, psi dash of 0 is greater than 1 and that finishes the lemma okay that finishes this this lemma which you see is highly technical it uh, it's not very difficult but the point is the ideas involved they use lot of hyperbolic geometry okay now you know now i can go back and say why the image of f0 is delta okay why is the image of f0 is less than delta i mean is equal to delta because if it is less than delta i can apply the lemma okay if so you know now it is now the proof is just one line if f0 of t is proper uh, properly contained in delta by the lemma we have an injective analytic map uh, psi from d naught which is f naught of d to delta such that psi dash at psi of 0 is 0 and mod psi dash of 0 is 1 uh, I mean sorry is greater than 1 ok now I can apply this lemma but the beautiful thing is if I combine uh, if I apply this f0 and then follow it by this psi the resulting thing is continues to be in this family that is the big deal ok note that first apply f0 then apply psi this is also in the family because after all it is also a map you first apply f0 and then you follow it by psi that continues to be a map from d to the unit disc ok because uh, psi is takes from this to the unit disc ok. So, this composition is also a map from d to the unit disc first point it is also analytic because it is composition of analytic functions second point third point it is injective because both are injective psi is injective and f0 is also injective therefore comp composition is injective but now comes the big deal what is the derivative of psi circle f0 uh, at, at z0 by the chain rule this is derivative of psi at f0 of z0 modulus times derivative uh, at f0 I mean derivative at z0 of f0 ok and this is and you know derivative f0 of z0 is 0 and psi dash of 0 modulus is greater than 1 this is a so this will be greater than a ok because this is greater than 1 this quantity is greater than 1 by the lemma and this quantity is equal to a ok. So, the product is greater than a now that is a contradiction because a was supposed to be a was supposed to be supremum of all the derivatives of all the functions in the family f the modulus of supremum of the modulus of the derivatives at the origin uh, at, at z0 at the point z0 you cannot find a for any member of the family if you take the derivative at the at z0 and take the modulus it cannot it has to make it cannot exceed a a is a supremum but i have found something that exceeds a that is a contradiction it is a contradiction to the fact that this psi circle f0 is in the family script f. 
So, this contradiction proves that f naught of d is delta in other words the extremal function f naught fills out the whole unit disc ok contradiction. To definition of a ok. So, this proves the important fact that f naught does map this domain onto the unit disc isomorphically ok and uh, of course, it we have already adjusted it to make 0 z not go to 0 you can make uh, the derivative uh, at z not to be positive by using a suitable rotation ok. So, you can also make the derivative positive right and uh, 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 and that finishes the proof of the Riemann mapping theorem ok. Uh, of course, one has to also think about whether you can make the derivative at z not equal to 1 ok, uh, but that one uh, uh, that one has to ponder about, but what we have is that given any simply connected domain D which is not the whole complex plane you can find an you can find a holomorphic isomorphism of that of onto the unit disc which maps any given point chosen point z not of D onto the origin and you can make the derivative at the origin I mean you can make the derivative at that point also to be a positive real number you can do this much ok. So, that finishes the proof of the Riemann mapping theorem.